greetings to you all today as we come together to worship God and to give thanks to God for our brother Stanley William Pierce. For those who may not know, I am Susan Pierce. I'm a minister in the Uniting Church and I'm also Uncle Stan's niece. As we gather, hear the good news in the words of the Apostle Paul. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, those who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. As we gather in community and hope, I greet you in the name of God, the God of love, hope, and everlasting life. On behalf of Stan's family and his church family, we welcome you wherever you are. Stan is a much loved and appreciated and respected member of the Donald Uniting Church congregation as well as the wider community of course, and prior to that the Methodist Church both at Jeffcott and Donald. And his presence and active involvement in the church in Donald over the last few years has been missed when he's not been able to attend. And although many can't be present today in these challenging times, the family are grateful for the love and support of all, including those who cannot be physically present. As we come today to give thanks to God for Stan and his life, we affirm the Christian conviction that while death is the end of life on this earth as we know it. It marks a new beginning in our relationship with God. We also seek to share the sorrow of all who mourn and to offer you our love and support, particularly to you, his children, Leslie, Judy and Lindsay, Rodney in Cooper Marion and Chris in Wales, Colleen and George, where are you George? And Matthew in Queensland. Also the 12 grandchildren, it's wonderful to see that many of them gathered here today and the great grandchildren of whom there are 20. Of course, his sister Evelyn, who was unable to travel with us this day and members of the wider family and community. It is the prayer of Stan's church family that you will know comfort and peace and the hope that God gives and know strength and grace for each day. The reality is we are products of our time, are we not? And while we rely on family being those who accept us no matter what, and is the place where we are closest. So often, family are the ones who miss out. Men, particularly born in the 1920s, who were bread women winners, and especially farmers, are part of the generation whose families were perhaps particularly prone to missing out. Anyone who's seen a farmer come in and late at night with dust all over him, exhausted, having to wash and eat and go to bed to get up the next morning knows what that is like. And as such, family is also the place where we most often experience our greatest disappointments, difficulties and challenges. The good news is though that Jesus Christ is with us and hears us. So let us come to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, your love for us is everlasting. Only you can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light. By the power of the Holy Spirit, come to us in our sadness with the light and peace of your presence. Speak to us now through your holy word that our faith may be strengthened and our hope sustained. Creating and forgiving God, we confess that we have not always lived as your grateful children. 
We have not loved in the same way that Christ loved us. Father, forgive us if there have been times when we failed Stan. Enable us by your grace to give, to forgive Stan anything that was hurtful to us. Have mercy on us and set us free from our sins and grant us healing and wholeness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God was in Christ reconciling himself, not counting our sins against us and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hear then Christ's word of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven and we can say thanks be to God. Stan loved to sing and I think one of his sadnesses was he stopped going to church because he couldn't sing anymore and that was a sadness for others as well. So let us sing as we join in a song that reflects Stan's life and faith, how great thou art. wonder how many times Uncle Stan would have sung that in the tractor without the sound of accompaniment. And thanks to many of our farmer relations who and others who led us in the singing of that wonderful hymn. Uncle Stan, in case you didn't know, loved to tell a story. Have you heard this one? And relationships were very important to him. Dan was kind-hearted 
and generous. He was very inventive and loved tinkering and created a lot of uh, wonderful things. I'm not quite sure if that was mainly Uncle Ed or Uncle Stan who was involved in the hurdy-gurdy at Jeffcott, but um, a lot of us kids got delight from inventive things and I know a lot of farmers were grateful for all the things that Uncle Stan could fix. We think we're having trouble with the PA. Oh. <laughs> I'm having trouble with the PA. Um, is that better, Jenny, if I hang on to it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uncle Stan also loved to recite poetry, most of which he learned at the Jeffcott School. And he, in particular, one he remembered and loved was on the first page of the Grade 5 Reader. And cousin Graham Pierce will now come and share that with us. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Graham. And we have lost power at the moment. It's on and off. It's probably best if you Last know. night, Tom. Um... <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Okay, well, it's helping with recording for people who aren't here, you see. Last night, Jenny very kindly offered me the off a loan of her kit while I was conducting worship. It's actually working now. I'm, I'm glad that it worked well for me, Jenny. Yeah, no, this one doesn't want to play the game. I don't know why. Stan loved some of those stories that came from our pioneering forebears and one of them that he used to tell occasionally to some of us was that Stan's great grandfather at one stage ran a store near Mount Bunanyong and like all of those storekeepers of the time he had a patent medicine which was known as Pierce Pacific. The old fella's grandkids said it'd fix anything. It didn't matter whether you had hemorrhoids or the flu or a rusty bolt, he specific would fix it. And a couple of times Stan shared that story with me. He also shared this poem. We are the old world people. Ours were the heart to dare, but our youth is spent and our backs are bent and the snow is in our hair. Back in the fifties, dim through the mists of years, by the bush-grown strand of a wild strange land, we entered the pioneers. Our axes rang in the woodland where the gaudy bush birds flew and we turned the loam of our newfound home where the eucalyptus grew. Housed in the rough log shanty or camped in a leaking tent, from sea to view of the mountains blue, where the eager fossickers went. We wrought with a will unceasing. We moulded and fashioned and planned. We fought the black and we blazed the track. That you might inherit the land. Here are your shops and cities, your cities of stucco and smoke, where the swift trains fly, where the wildcats cry or the sad bush silence broke. Take now the fruit of our labour, nourish and guard it with care. For our backs are bent, and our youth is spent, and the snow is in our hair. Thank you, Graham. I'm going to Thank put this down and... Stanley William Pierce was the youngest child of Geddy Thomas and Ivy Edmonds Pierce, brother to Bob and Tom, who are both deceased, and sister to Ele Evelyn, who is 95. Born on the 11th of October 1927 at the Ivanhoe Private Hospital in Donald, he spent his growing up years at Oaklands in the original family home where Philip and Tracy Pierce now live. Can you hear me? His education began at Jeffcott School, to which he walked the three and a half miles, and later uh, he was able to ride on horseback. With his siblings, he would also meet up with his cousins who were a mile further on and do the journey to and from school. 
He remembered all the droughts and dust storms. Many times the dust was so thick that the group had to follow the fence line as they navigated their way home. Other times when it was wet, he walked to school in bare feet and washed the mud off his feet at the Methodist church tank. He struggled to pull his socks over his wet, cold feet. And of course, being the youngest, he was always last. <laughs> Having dyslexia, school would not always have been a favourite place or an easy place to be. Stan also developed osteomyelitis in his right wrist and had three years in the fifth grade because of it. He was told that he would possibly lose his arm, but his dad, Ged, was told by medical staff that they would see what they could do. He then spent some time in hospital because of it. And he remembers as an 11 year old saying to nurse Kitty Hoare, God won't let me have a stiff wrist wrist if I asked him not to, will he? And she said, no, darling, he won't. And she patted him on the head. We know and give thanks to God that his arm was saved and his strength restored <laughs> and he felt that he was greatly blessed and his prayer had been heard. After primary school, he went on to Donald Higher Elementary leaving school at 15 and worked with his family on the farm. He could remember the modest home with no running water, kerosene lights and an underground well that provided fresh water for use in the house. Of eggs kept in the ground to keep them cool of sitting around the table eating meals under sheets of the Donald Times to stop dust from falling onto the food. Of one banana being cut up into fresh custard and being shared with about seven people. Times were tough and nothing went to waste. He had a happy childhood and made his own fun. His pets included dogs, lambs, cats, horses, and a pet galah named Tweeba. Another story he recalled was when, when wanting to go out with his older brothers as younger brothers are prone to want, and his older brothers did not want him, want him tagging along. And they made sure that he didn't by calling out to the house ram, Roger, Roger, Roger. And Roger would come belting along and knock Stan over. Such are bigger brothers. At about 12 years of age, Stan and cousin Ed would collect new cigarette butts that were discarded by the workers and their fathers, no doubt. I remember us pinching our grandfather's cigarettes. <laughs> they rolled up the unused tobacco in the newspaper and tried to smoke it, which clearly was not successful. Life revolved around the farm, school and church. Sunday school picnics were a delight, followed by a concert in a Methodist church at Sheffcott. They were great fun. At 16, he travelled with his brother Tom on the special fruit picker, pick, fruit picker train to Mildura for the dried fruit harvest. He worked and stayed with the Jennings family every year for nine years. They developed a special friendship that lasted until now. As a four-year-old, John Jennings thought that Stan was a mountain of a man and 10 foot tall, and he's maintained contact ever since. Stan began courting a girl from Jimboola, and I have it on good authority, but a number of girls were jealous. Local girls. <laughs> Uncle Stan had a good story about catching up with Rilla through Dorothy Adams at the time she was Dorothy Gilmore at Meyer in Melbourne when on an event for young farmers. In 1953, Stan married Kathleen, Catherine Rilla Rolstock and soon after took up residence on the farm called Maisie's, three miles east of Donald. They farmed the land and experienced all the trials that farming brought. 
as they raised their young family there. First came Leslie Diane in 1954, followed by Judith Gale, Rodney Stewart, Marion Lee, Colleen Margaret, and Matthew John. With the responsibility of providing for his family and the love he had for the land, he forged a modest living with long and tedious hours of hard work. They were painful. There were painful years of droughts, rust, frost, and mice plagues that damaged the crops. One of the things that he loved later on was uh, going to Mutabi. Leslie can remember a scene where he was so exhausted from a day's work that he had to rest his knees on the cupboard as he helped his mum with as he helped their mum with the dishes. The family were happy and enjoyed the bounty of fresh fruit and vegetables from the, the garden that Stan had planted, and of course milk, cream and butter, eggs and meat that the farm provided. The majority of his life Stan spent on the farm. And Sundays were about the only time he got away from it. Such is the nature of farming. Church folk became his second family. And apart from them, he said he knew few other people. And he said that he was a stranger in his own town. After harvest each year, the family would all get away for a much needed break and holiday to the beach. And as kids, the kids wondered why Stan and Rilla slept so much while on holidays. <laughs> As adults, they know that their parents were so exhausted that they needed to replenish their strength. In his 60s, Stan discovered the thrill of becoming a part-time opal miner at Minterby in South Australia. He only had minimal success, but enjoyed the adrenaline rush that came from discovering some colour in the rock. He has many samples of opals in jars which he loved to show anyone who was interested, and even those who weren't. Each daughter was given a piece of opal jewellery, which some are wearing today. Among his loves in later life was sharing his many photo albums and life stories. Stan worked the farm until he was 79, initially with his father and brothers in a local firm, a firm and these brothers were well-known men. And later on, when the, the uh, partnership broke up, they went their separate ways, um, and Stan worked with his own son, Rodney, they were well-known for working together. The farm was sold, but he would go out and chip weeds because he hated weeds. He and Rilla retired to Willow Court in Donald, where he remained until earlier this year. After Rilla died, he was dependent on services he received through the council, and he was always extremely grateful. The family would like to extend a big thank you to all who supported Stan, and for those who visited him over the years. His health required that he needed to be cared for, so he was transported to aged care in Mildura, where he was close to family. Staff tell us of time spent with Stan, where he shared his life's experiences and he still loved to do things with his hands. They were entertained by his sense of humour and, and they learned to love and respect the man he was. From the family. We all miss our dad, but know that his will to live left him when Rilla died six years ago. Finally, he has got what he asked for and is now at peace. We love you, Dad. Thank you to Judy for putting those stories together and for all the family contributing to that wonderful community. Stan was very involved in the life of the church and for years he was communion steward, preparing for and washing up after communion for 60 and more people for years on end. His love for God was deep and enduring and he spent time with the scriptures. 
His life was directed by his faith. So let us hear um, now from God's word. I'm wondering if someone would like to read it for us. It's printed in the order of service. Does someone want to read it for us, please? I'll do it. Thanks, Colleen. This is a reading uh, in the book of John, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Normally we'd have a much longer Bible reading or even more than one reading. But this verse encapsulates the story of Uncle Stan's life, faith and witness. And such is its power that it is enough. It is a verse that has transformed lives over the millennia and was Stan's own experience. As a youth, he enjoyed the pursuits of a young man on the farm, shooting, riding a motor motorbike to get around, participating in church concerts and picnics. And after his marriage, the children came in quick succession. And with that, the responsibilities of family. Church was always a part of Stan and Rilla's life. That's how it was in those times. And in the church, we talk about being transformed in the power and love of God. But when we've been involved in the church for a long time, we don't always or often see such changes. Transformation only comes through Jesus Christ. And Stan and Riddle's lives and others, including Pat and Terry Trollope, were transformed after an experience at Warwick Nabeel, which shaped the rest of their lives, guiding their decisions, their attitudes and their behaviour um, and probably increasing his uh, considerate and kind heart and generous heart that he always had. They attended a meeting at Warwick Nabeel, which, uh, as I said, um, and they were, it was so, so many people there, they were separated, they couldn't all sit together. And for that night, for each of them, there came a personal realisation that Jesus Christ loved them that Jesus Christ died for us all, taking on our, all of our sins and our darkness, our despair and our suffering on himself. And that in that sacrifice, we are forgiven. We are restored. They realise that in this, Jesus offers new life for now and for eternity. For he defeated death by rising again. The understanding that Jesus offers a personal relationship with each one was enlightening. And as a result, they each accepted Jesus Christ as their Saviour and Lord. For them, it was no longer about religion or about going to church, but it was about relationship with God. Not having to live life in our own strength, but in the strength and grace of God and in the power of God's Holy Spirit. This experience brought light, new life and a new beginning. The way Uncle Stan tells it, he said it was like they were floating and or being carried perhaps. And interestingly enough, both he and Auntie Rilla felt the same way as they discovered later when they compared notes. And that changed and determined the rest of their lives. Uncle Stan and I often had that conversation and had prayer together. Well, was life perfect after that? No. Was Stan perfect from then on? Not at all. But he knew and he lived in the grace of God and this empowered him and motivated him all his days. That is why this verse from John chapter 3 verse 16 is enough. For it was Stan's prayer and if only we can all grasp it. It is Stan's prayer that this is our experience too. And what a different world we would have and what different lives we would live. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is why we have the confidence as Christians that Stan is in God's arms, that we do not need to fear death, for death has been defeated, that one day the Lord will come back and bring to himself those who have died in him. That's why we can sing in the words of J. Wilbur Chaplin, living, he, about Jesus of course, living, he loved me, dying, he saved me, buried, he carried my sins far away, rising, he justified freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day. And the good news is that God hears our prayers and I now invite congregational member and friend Verna Harris to come and lead us in prayer. Stan's life. To each of us that means something different. We remember Stan as a much loved and loving husband of Rilla, loving father of Leslie, Judy, Rodney, Marion, Colleen and Matthew, a loving father-in-law, grandpa, great-grandpa, a brother, brother-in-law, uncle, farmer and friend. We ask you to bless, bring comfort, love and peace to each family member as they mourn his passing, but also have the assurance that he is with you. Especially we remember Rodney, Marion and Matthew and other family members who are far away and not able to be here today. Also stand Sister Evelyn. Be especially close to them right at this very moment. May they know your compassion, love and care for each one of them. We give thanks for Stan's life, his gentle nature, and for the many stories he loved to share with us about family life, growing up, farming, faith in his Lord and Saviour, and his Christian's witness and example to us. Thank you for his dedicated service in the life of the church, and thank you for bringing Stan into each of our lives, and we give thanks that he is now continuing life in heaven with you. Amen. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Verna. As we come to farewell Stan and commend him into the hand of God, let us hear the words of Jesus who said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not be afraid. Loving God, we long for peace. Peace to leave Stan with you. Peace to strengthen us for today and tomorrow. Peace with ourselves, with one another, and with you. Give us that peace which the world cannot give. And living and giving God, you gave stand to us 
and we return him to you. By your mighty power you gave us life and in your love you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. Receive our brother. Stanley William Pierce, whom you have loved and whom we have loved, into your care and grant to him those things that I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart imagined, through Jesus Christ, our Saviour in life and death, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Stan was a community man whose love for God, family, farming and the community sustained him all his life. His resilience, commitment and determination have seen him through life's joys and sorrows. As we think on Stan and his 93 years, we can be grateful for having known and loved him and give thanks for all the good that he brought into our lives and the community in which he lived. The Apostle Paul, who suffered much for his faith, said, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Jesus himself said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead and see, I am alive forever and ever and I have the keys of death and death's domain. It is the faith and hope we have in Jesus Christ that enables us to believe that what God has done and said is true. That in conquering death by rising again, Jesus Christ brings new life forevermore. So gracious God, give us strength to let go and to follow your example. Your summon for us to love one another give us the attentiveness to hear the calling of each other's hearts. You help us to know the height and depth of love by calling us into your heart. May we grow well and do right in your name. And may we follow Stan's example and Rilla's example of Christian commitment and follow you with all our hearts. Help us to leave him in your care while we remember him in our hearts. We have entrusted Stan to the hands of God. We now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, trusting in the infinite mercy of God and to God be the glory forever. Stan, you were born here. You grew up here. You belong here. We lay you down in the land with your tears, with your laughter, with your story, we lay you down in the land. With your friends, with your family, with your community, we lay you down in the land. With love and completeness, with hope and faithfulness, Stan, we lay you down in the land. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, we pray that you will look graciously on those who mourn, especially Stan's family, whom he loved and, who, and they who loved him, that casting all their care upon you, they may know your consola the consolation of your love. Be our refuge and strength in sorrow. And help us to go forward in faith so that when our time on earth has ended, we may be united with all who love him in 
your heavenly kingdom where every tear will be wiped away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stan left a legacy of faith and love. His self-sacrifice meant the family would have the best that he could give. He is with us in our hearts and in our minds. Let us go now into the world glad that we have loved and cared. Free to weep for Stan who is gone. Free to hold each other in our human frailty and empowered to live life to the full. Let us go and follow his example of love and care for others. And as we prepare to leave, may the feet of God walk with you and his hand hold you tight. May the eye of God rest on you and his ear hear your cry. May the smile of God be for you and his breath give you life. May the child of God grow in you and his love bring you home. So the blessing of the Father of all goodness, the Son of love and the Spirit of peace be with you now and forever. Amen. So we now come to say our final farewells and pay our last respects, which we are invited to do so after the family. I will come to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hopeful all who are hopeless. I am eyes for In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am brave. I have called you each by name. strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know.
Thank you.